quite interesting insights from 2008 Olympic champion Wilfred Bungay, of course, speaking on a myriad of issues ranging from his uh, reformation journey and, of course, his bid in terms of, you know, uh, what he tried in 2017, trying to look forward getting elected as member of parliament. Uh, but, of course, his bid not going through and even his word of inspiration to the upcoming uh, athletes and the talents coming up and what they should do for them to be great. Of course, it's the touchline. A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Right about now, we want to delve into Kenyan football with regards to preview of what is expected to happen in terms of, you know, March day 14 of FKF Premier League uh, uh, competition and Gormaya. Just like we told you earlier on, they have won this title four times running consecutively. But this time round, they haven't been in high-flying form. Of course, as we speak, Tasca leading the pack followed by KCB, led by Zedeka Ziko Otien and you know, uh, Bandari and Karibangi Sharks coming in third and fourth, respectively. Of course, big shout, big shout out to our good friend Millicent Nalia Kasimi watching from Mweya, because she says that everyone at top grade Rice Millers is getting glued on their screen, catching up the show. But she's asking, when is Steven Gerrard playing? Come on, Naliaka. <laughs> Steven Gerrard is no longer a player. I know you are never in love for him. He's still on. But right now, as you speak, he's the coach for Celtic <laughs> Football Club. He's no longer a player, Naliaka. <laughs> Nyamura Moredi is joining us, a robust sports journalist and a woman who loves football indeed. Of course, Nyamura, good to see you. How have you been? I've been good. And uh, nice having me here. How comes you don't tell people like Naliaga that, you know, <laughs> Steven Gerrard is no longer a football player? You see, we've had women mm. having like for some players, you know. Christian you remember what Ronaldo. happened at Kasarani, mm -hmm. where Everton was playing against ah, Karibang Sharks. And how women attended the match in large numbers because of Theo Alcott. I, 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 Are I you trying to say I should change my career to get a woman? <laughs> Depends, uh, depends on very many <laughs> factors, you know. So I think um, women tend to love football because of the players, uh, people like Walcott, Cristiano Ronaldo, especially if you ask any lady about football, they'll just mention uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, and we all know why. Oh, of course we don't know, sorry, and I don't know, but <laughs> you, you know. Know. I, I, speaking from you a point know. of knowledge. I, I, I thought it was rugby, I was planning to join the gym, but now I'm done. Definitely. Let's speak about Kenya Premier League. A lot of fixers are lined up this particular afternoon. Uh, mm. Sofa Parker set to play against uh, Bitco United at their new stadium in Undani. And of course, uh, FC Leopards also uh, seeking to record three maximum points this particular afternoon against Nairobi City Stars. Quite an interesting uh, afternoon mm. it is as far as Kenyan Premier League is concerned. But Nyambura, what do you think about the run so far? Uh, the run, uh, the run is good, but I see us having a new, a new title winner, and uh, maybe just saying Tasca. You know how Tasca has been performing very well. In fact, they are top of the table. Uh, I think nine or ten points clear. But we cannot write off the current champions, uh, Gormaya, because they have game in hand. But you know we can't always count on game in hand because they are supposed to win all of them and anything can happen they can draw they can lose so the pressure is always on the person who hasn't played the, their all their matches because let's talk about maybe tasker they've played all their games at least they know where they stand at the moment but people like gore they really have to work extra hard and ensure they have uh, they have like won all their matches looking at uh a team like Wazito, they are also very, very good title contenders. Having Kimanzi as their coach, I know Don Rico really played these cards well. And they have even a good technical bench. So I'm looking at wa uh, Wazito having a good run, even possibly winning the title. Do you agree? Do you read from the same script we've heard that, you know, Wazito can pull us up, right? So, of course, they have uh, a great squad, a great manager in Francis Kimonzi, financial muscles um, at the helm, and we've seen even how they are attending their matches. Come on, in choppers, man. Yes. And like other teams, probably, <laughs> now, <laughs> road getting at the venue while tired. Mm. How can I say it? The packaging around the product is very good. 
that, that 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 is what counts. You can be brought in with a chopper, you can be brought in with a Mercedes Benz Maybach and all that. But what matters is what you do at the field of play. This time round, we cannot say they are not doing something. They are really playing well, and they have moved. They are, they are actually top there. They are now at position six, 13 matches with 24 points. They they are, they have been there. They come even to third position. But I think. From what we saw when they played in the NSL, they came on to the league, went back and came on to the league was for a championship team you need that last kick for you to go on and win the Kenyan or any title. Yes, well, just we say, yeah, you need that. For Wazito, what they have done so far as the matches that we have played so far is thirteen matches, we still got another twenty or so, twenty five or so matches to go. Yeah. So that consistency of what they do is going to, to be key for them and also in the second leg of the season will be key for them. Considering that Francis Kimanzi is experienced and he has brought in some of the experienced players in the Kenya Premier League, the likes of Elia Sieche and Kevin Kimani, they have come on to that side. So I think with time, this might be his first season, but I think next season is when he can mold a team. But don't take it away from Francis Kimanzi because there's a manager who has won the league with Madara United, yeah. sub 2008 surprise. Another surprise team was Sofopaka in 09. And then he has won also the league with Tasca. So he knows the murky waters of the Kenya Premier League. So that one will be a key for them. But this season also, for me, I might, I'm still saying that Tasca, we might see a new champion and that might be Tasca. Yeah or for the first time ever, KCB. And uh, definitely, in the yeah. event that we have a new title winner, it's good yeah. for Kenyan football because Gormaya has dominated the headlines and yeah. at some extent, local football fans saying that the competition now lacks flavor and oomph because, yeah. you know, it's a one-team affair. But talking about uh, what happened to Gore, I don't know, what can you attribute to their slump? Because they haven't been in good form. We've seen them tapping, you know, the services of one of the experienced tacticians locally, Sami Pamzo Molo, mm -hmm. as their assistant deputizing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, their Brazilian head coach. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would also bring uh, much-needed reforms at the helm? Yes, of course, because uh, a coach like Pamzo is experienced, coming from Posta Rangers. And um, I think the problem with Gormaya is having financial issues and players eventually leaving the club you know and in in matter of fact is good players leaving the club so having a uh, new new players uh, getting them to jail again it's a big problem and also this season we have them i, I think they are exhausted because of uh, participating in the calf they have exhausted like they have exhausted their their players and uh, they don't have maybe the depth of players that, that they really need because of maybe financial issues or not having enough players i think that is the reason maybe they are lagging behind but i know when this is all done they will come back and with the matches they haven't played yet, maybe they'll get back uh, to, to the top four and maybe they can even go ahead and win. But right now, having Tasca up there, it's a very, very uh, tough deal for them right now. Let's speak about the fixtures lined up. A lot of them, just like I indicated to you, Ali FC Leopards looking forward to play against newly promoted side City Stars. You know, Leopards <laughs> blowing hot on cold, not very consistent. You remember the promise mm -hmm. their chairman Dan Shikanda made to them in the event that they win the title, that every player will be given a house. <laughs> Do you think that will motivate them to, to, <laughs> to challenge for the title this season? I think before you say that uh, you're going to give players a house, <laughs> sort their salaries first yeah. but that, that's a, a thought and uh, the chairman is a good friend of mine so in this town we'll meet and i'll tell him that but at the end of the day yes it's good motivation and all that and everything but all the time the change in management is not good for fc lopez i think it's one of the reasons why they are not consistent in the league you remember they brought in kasambungo Katsambungo left, Anton Modo Kimani was given the team, he has left, you have brought in uh, Haji, the former Simba coach, to come and uh, be their manager now. They need that management consistency. 
in that you have one technical team running the team, but they also have the same problems that uh, every team in the Kenya Premier League goes through, financial problems. There, there was a time, I think, three weeks ago, we heard that they had not trained uh, and uh, the, the, the players were having a ghost look going on to the field of play to play. So those are the things that have to be sorted out for these teams and everything. So if they can put that in order, they can go ahead and challenge for the Kenya Premier League. But even at the moment when you look at them, they are not badly off because they have played 12 matches and they are 25 points. So they still got that chance to go ahead and do something in the Kenyan Premier League. What I can say is for FC Leopard, they can challenge for a top four position at the moment and their players now have got to be consistent the likes of elvis rupia have got to come out and score week in week out so that they can go ahead and do something when it comes to the kenyan premier league but uh, if you look at uh, maybe a player like elvis rupia he has scored i think more than half of the goals uh, fc leopards has scored yes. so it means if if anything god forbid happens to uh, rupia maybe an injury then uh FC Leopards will be in, in, in trouble. Yeah, that, that, they wouldn't that was, get goals. That was a key co conversation during the derby, the over-reliance of Elvis Rupia, as yeah. you have correctly put it. And mm -hmm. that one is going to hamper them very much because yes. there's a player who's going to get tired in everything that is happening. And if you rely on him and he gets an injury, mm -hmm. then you are mm -hmm. out of the league yes. altogether. Yeah. But then again, it is the mid-season window, mm -hmm. getting the good players yes. who can come and help Elvis Rupia mm. go ahead and score goals for you. Sure. At Mundani Stadium in Taita, Taveta, fresh from, you know, recording that one victory last weekend against Poster Rangers, Sofa Parker mm. will be looking forward to, you know, ride on the same form against newly promoted side Bitco United. Mm. And this time round, former player Piston Mutamba mm. set to start for Sofa Parker against their former uh, employers. I don't know. Do you think he will be, he's been of much addition to the Batoto Bamungu. Uh, yes, of course. Um, I think the main challenge will be he's been out uh, for some time yes, now. Yes, yes. He's not been playing actively. So, yes, it is a good addition and maybe we expect him to perform really well. But I don't think we can gauge him in this match because, come on, coming from not playing too ma uh, so much, it will he's be... Rusty. Yeah, he's rusty a bit, but I believe. Um, you know, if you're a player, you're always a player. So... He can, he can come up and do something. Also, no, Robert, there so are players we've had in Kenyan football and, you know, they have maintained their stay. The mm. likes of, you know, Steven Waruru, mm. Okefa Swani, mm. you know, Modo Kiongera. <laughs> and we, sp we speak the two, Modo and uh, Aswani, are playing for Sofapaka. But generally, what, what, what do you think about, you know, uh -huh. the, this was team's it, so. policy? Yeah, yeah. Uh. I'm mm -hmm. saying about mm -hmm. Modo Kyogera, mm -hmm. oh, who yes, played yes. for Gurmaya some time yes, back yeah. and even with Tanzanian giant Simba. Right now yeah. he's playing for uh, Sofa Parker. Sofa Parker yeah. I don't know the policy by the local football teams in terms of you know, their transfer activities. Do you think it will change in some way? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that because it looks like you know, it's a policy of recycling. Okay. I think you, you, we, we have got to understand that uh, there are players who understand playing in the Kenyan Premier League and they know the Kenyan Premier League terrain and how <laughs> it's played and that's why you'll find that uh, most of the time they will be there uh, for a very long time. It's very hard to get a play in Kenya to play in the Kenyan Premier League for more than 15 years mm -hmm. or for let's say a, a span of 10 to 15 years. Some mm -hmm. of the players who did that are the likes of John Barraza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the likes of Francis Onyiso, and uh, that that was from way back when. But w when you look at those kind of players at the moment, someone like Kiongera is played in Kenya. He performed very well when KCB had a good run. I, I think it was in 2014, 2013, 2014, when KCB had a good run. He, he was drafted and left for Simba, and now he's back into the country. But for him, injury has been a key for him. But other players like uh, Piston Mutamba, for him, he has not been a big mainstay in the Kenyan Premier League because he used to be an NSL player, came on to the league and now played for Bitco, Wazito, went out, but now he's back for Sofa Parker. So for the transfer activity, 
what I usually say is because our league is not that much. Pro we are not professional yet. We are just an amateur league. That's why you can get teams buying 10, 12 players in the mid-season. You get even four players from those five will not be used. Mm -hmm. And the next season, they'll be going all the way. So that's some of the problems. But when you look at a team like Tasca with Matano, this time around, is the only one who released the players. And they did not buy any other player, I think, because he had already planned his season way ahead of the others. So that is why. But when it comes to the transfer activity, that lack of professionalism is also a major part in these teams. Yes. Definitely, in terms of transfer activities, these teams need to bolster their squads just to cement their chances of winning title crown. It matters review and preview of Bet King Premier League, of course, renamed to Bet King Premier League from Kenya Premier League under, you know, the management of Football Kenya Federation, which is running the top tier. A lot of matches lined up this particular afternoon. One of them, Western Steamer, against Wazito FC, and just like you indicated earlier, CHA uh, has been, you know, acquired at the Kenyan money backs, Francis Kimanzi, just seeking to, you know, grab the title from Gourmet, which Actually, has been winning That, that it game is going to be key for Western Steamer because there are... So, some Western Steamer players who have been released and they are not in their team. The likes of Chinoso, Promise, Kara, more so they are not there. But Elias Yeche is now playing for Wazito FC, mm -hmm. going to be key for them. And he has been a very good player. You see, you saw his prominence with KCB and also with Sofa Parker. So Kimanzi has signed a player who he knows is a very good midfielder going forward. Bandari has got Kasambungo. As mm -hmm. their tactician, and they needed the services of, you know, uh, Anthony Modokimani, former coach yeah. of FC Leopards, now reuniting again at the Dockers, and the Dockers will be playing against Zoya, which pulled a surprise against Gore. Yes. <laughs> what, that that what, will be, the, I think, the best signing Bandari has done so far. That has got to be Anthony Modokimani coming in as an assistant coach to Kasambungo. Remember, Kasambungo was with him when he came to FC Leopards. He was the, the manager then, and he brought in uh, Anthony Kimani to be his assistant. And FC Leopards had a good run of matches then. And even when Kasambungo left FC Leopards, during Kimani's interim time as manager for FC Leopards, he was really great for FC Leopards. And now they have joined hands together at Bandari and they are going to do wonders and there was a report card that was doing rounds on social media of the how coaches have been performing in these calf coaching licenses and I saw Anton Modokiman who was number two in that list so if he can put the what he learned in class to practice Bandari is going far. Yeah. You know there has been a problem with Kenyan teams with their love for foreign-based tacticians, <laughs> who are damn expensive and very exorbitant to maintain, because we've seen what Anthony Modo Kimani was capable of changing the fortunes at the den, but now letting him go to join Bandari. Do you think that was their undoing? Yes, yes, because uh, I think in Kenya we have a problem with trusting our own, yes, and we believe so much in the foreign coaches, of which we cannot really say it hasn't worked to some point because we have seen teams like uh, Gormaya having foreign-based coaches and they are performing really well. I think they are going by that fact they have seen some teams performing well with uh, foreign coaches. But I think with, with, the current, with the current coaches we have, they have even trained professionally, I think we should give them a, a, a chance so that you can see what they can do because they understand <coughs> sorry they understand our players very well they understand the the, the dynamics of our league so i think I it's think, it's, uh, it's high chance we give them a chance even for them it, to prove themselves it, it, it's it's a perception out there that uh, kenyan premier league has foreign coaches who perform there's only two clubs that rely on yes. foreign managers and that mm -hmm. is gourmet and fc leopard yeah. those are the only Two clubs that actually have foreign coaches. We saw Tasca. Is that the reason why yeah. Gourmet keeps winning <laughs> titles? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe th there's that there's that perception that when you when these players are working with uh, a diff uh, an international a foreign manager, they get to perform very well. At the end of the day, there is that, and we, we can say it works to an extent. But most of the Kenyan clubs rely on. Kenyan 
managers. I think a team like Tasca has been successful with local managers. The, the time they won the league with a foreign manager of recent has got to be Paul Nkata, the, the Ugandan uh, coach. But most of the time they, they have been successful with the likes of Jakub Gostumle, they have been successful with Robert Matano, they have been successful with Francis Kimanzi in most of their triumphs here in the country and also even outside of the country. Then you look at a team like Bandari, for a very long time they have been having uh, Tuair Mohidin as one of their key coaches up until they also brought in Bernard Mualala who took them to the Confederations of African Football. Mm -hmm. And then now is the first time that they are getting a foreign tactician in Kasambungo. And uh, you, you look at even Wazito, with the, all the money they had, they brought in Stuart Hall, the former Simba coach. But when he came on to the country, mm. he left very fast. <laughs> he did yes. not do anything with uh, Sofa Parker. And then all these other clubs, all the managers you come to realize are mostly local and they are successful. Some of them might have not won the league yet, but their brand of football is something that every team will want to play for. Look at uh, the likes of Karobangi Sharks with William Muluya, local manager, brought them all the way from the NSL to the Kenyan Premier League, won even the Super Cup, and he did very well. Look at Mualala. Yes. So, those, that's a perception is there that foreign managers perform well in the Kenyan Premier League and they do well, but at the end of the day, clubs have been successful with local mm. managers. I think that's a conversation we can delve into <laughs> comprehensively and, you know, compare and contrast of home-based tacticians and, you know, foreign-based coaches. What do you think yourself? Be part of the program. Join the conversation. Hashtag touchline Y254 Twasike Maxwell at Osoro Bats. Oh, he changed his Twitter <laughs> handle. It's Mirumbi Osoro. Yeah. Why man. the change, man? Hey. Uh, or you posted some insensitive information on Twitter <laughs> and you got <laughs> banned. No, no, no. I, I discovered there's a name I have that I'm not using. Mirumbi to Osoro. Use, to use it. <laughs> Why? It looks nice. Yeah. What do you think about it? Does it look nice to you? In it the past, is. we had you know, mm. where, you know, women could get attracted to, you know, the opposite gender because of the name. <laughs> like my name, Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> on a light map, though, of course, we're just keeping it. <laughs> Real and calm, it's never that serious. Come on, it is Saturday, we're talking sports. Yeah. So, the last game of the day mm -hmm. in terms of Kenya Premier League is, mm. you know, the battle of relegation. Western Steamer mm. up against, it's Viga United up against Zoo Kericho. Zoo, mm. actually, mm. you remember their problem with Football Kenya mm. Federation of a compliance mm. of, you know, the broadcast yes, agreement yes. that mm. uh, made them to delay participation mm. in top tier and they are at the tail end mm. of the 18 team standings. Getting low, uh, locked against Viga mm. United, mm. which is occupying 15 spots mm. on the log. Dynamics of that particular match? Um, this will be an interesting match because uh, this is a battle for uh, of relegation. Um, but this I'm giving Zoo, uh, considering their their past uh, matches against these uh, big big teams, and they have uh, managed to pull a surprise. So I'm expecting maybe Zoo to win, but it will be a very tough match. Indeed, a tough match. As far as you know that title, Battle of Relegation, Viga United taking uh, on against Zuke Richo uh, in this afternoon's uh, match day 14 of Kenya Premier League. Sorry, Robert, our team. Oh, I'm not sure whether it's your team. It's my team. The Slam Boys <laughs> of Madara United under Salim Ali. Not doing very well, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they were in the same problem as Zoo. The, the league did not start yeah. well with them. They were also in the SDT with everything that is happening. And they're going against Kakamega homeboys. Tricky one. It's a, a game you cannot predict with the, what Salim Ali is going to come because he's one, he's one team that the average age is really young for the slam boys. So he's trying to work with them and see if they can get something out of it. And a win for them will be key for them because they are in the playoff position. And you don't expect Madara United to be relegated to play in the NSL. I think that day the Kenyan Premier League will not be the same. And people will be like, hey, it's not. But it's going to be a key game for them. And Kakamega Umboys finished second last season. And then this season, they are not consistent in their matches on what they are doing. But that's something uh, Coach Nicolas Muyot has got to work with and see what he's going to do with them. But it's a game that it's worth watching. And Ruma Mill has been indicating that Kakamega Umboys is looking forward to acquiring 
you know the services of uh, you know former bandari tactician Bernard Malala to replace Nicolas Muyot who hasn't been doing very well of late yes. we saw how you know he, mm. he, he, he lost the game against Gormai which came yes. from behind to record 2-1 Right. But I think that would be quite unfortunate, considering what Muyot is also capable of doing. One of the yes. best young coaches locally. What, what can I say? The, the ownership of uh, the clubs in Kenya are not patient with, with managers. This is not Arsenal, where the board can give a tether all the time in the world to make his own team. The, the, the club uh, chairman here, they want you to perform at the end of the day. But if Kakamega Umbo, I don't think there's a big difference between Nicolas Muyoti and Bernard Mwalala. The difference comes in experience-wise, because Bernard Mwalala, all of them were former players, mm -hmm. but Mwalala has been a, an experienced coach. So he was in Tanzania with the Coastal Union and he, he did well with them. Came into the country, you saw what they did with Nzoya Sugar. He brought Nzoya Sugar back into the Kenyan Premier League. The last time Nzoya was in the Kenyan Premier League was, I think, in 2006. He brought them back onto the Kenyan Premier League. And then he went to Bandari, and you saw what he did with Bandari, second in the league, winning the FKF Cup, going on to the Confederations Cup. But at the end of the day, Bandari also did not stick with him because they come the next season, results were not consistent for him. And it's the same, same thing that is happening to Nicolas Muyota at Kakamega Homeboy. So if results are not going to be key for him, he is going to come in for them. But Mualala has an issue over Muyoti. And that is identification of talent and nurturing that talent. Definitely. Buckley Fed, of course, <laughs> sending in his submissions. He's saying that he's enjoying the show. Uh, courtesy of, you know, the beauty sandwiched <laughs> between the beasts. <laughs> you know, Buckley Fed, nowadays, you're not having kind words for us. Come on. Anyway, thank you for your uh, valid concern. So it looks like you're boosting the rating of the show. <laughs> <laughs> on a light note again of course we're gonna take a short break then come up with the fan favorite segment the fan zone where we discuss international football a lot lined up tomorrow super sunday manchester derby city which are the favorites for the title crown taking on united of course which are sitting second on the table and uh, remember thomas tuchel a man in charge of chelsea football club has been doing very well since taking over from frank lampard is he the man needed at stamford bridge to change the fortunes of Chelsea Football Club. Jurgen Klopp, oh my goodness, not doing very well despite winning the title uh, last season and even uh, getting Champions League crown with Liverpool. It's been a bad day in the office for the German international with reports indicating that Steven Gerrard, the boyfriend to <laughs> Naliaka, Mutoto Alois, <laughs> said to you know replace him at the helm of Liverpool. How about we talk about that in the next few minutes, but before then, Let's look at the reactions of managers during their press conference on Friday with what they had to say ahead of, you know, the match day this particular weekend as far as English Premier League is concerned. Don't go away, stay tuned, it's the touchline. Just keeping it easy, you know.